Welcome back. So the first thing that we're going to want to do is we're going to want to set up our buttons to function as a spawner. So the first thing we're going to want to do is move our uh, object to the location where we want it to be when it is spawned. For me, that is going to be about right here. So it's going to be inside of this little cavity, pretty well centered. Okay, and I'm just going to make this easier to type in. So I'm just going to cut it down to two digits um, beyond the decimal. Okay, and I'm happy with this result. Next, we are going to go to the Add Node button within our global triggers, because here is where we are going to allow the user to create the behaviors, and as we want them to be able to do this at any point in time, we are going to be utilizing the global trigger functions within our simulation. So first, we're going to go with Spawn Connector. We're going to then go with Spawn Molecule 1 and spawn molecule 2. Okay. Next we are just going to go to the use function. We are going to type in here our gray cylinder for the connector, or you could utilize the drop-down function here. So if, if you prefer the drop-down, this is an absolutely acceptable alternative way. I believe the red one is molecule one. I just want to confirm that. Oh, no, nope. so the white one is molecule one. My bad. So I'd actually switch this to work with the white cylinder just to keep that consistent. And for the molecule two, I would use the red cylinder. All right. So with that, we've made it so that we can use our buttons and I personally don't like the text box indicator, but I do like the highlight, so I'm just going to remove the text box indicator here. But you can keep that if you would like, or get rid of the highlight. It doesn't make too much of a difference at this moment. Next, we are going to scroll down to the spawner attribute. And we are going to select which object that we want this to spawn, in this case, M connection. You can set a max amount of how many of these dispensers can be spawned. And we just need to type in the value of where they will be spawned at. This will be, in our case, 2.7. Um, sorry, I want that to be a solid value. So 2.7, 1.16, and 1.8. Wait, nope, that's the dispenser, my bad. I want it to be 2.23, 0.94, 1.53. Okay, so that will spawn this M connection when I use the gray cylinder at this location, or we'll create a copy of it, I should say. We're going to want to repeat this process for each of the objects so that they all spawn within that location. 0.94, 1.53. Spawn, atmosphere 2, 2.23, 0 0.94, and 1.53. Okay, and we can increase the number of each of these so that they can spawn more than 20 if we so chose, but I think that this is going to be fine to give our users access to as many of these as we feel is necessary. The last thing you're going to want to do is make it so that these objects that we are spawning are one, not static, and two, are grabbable. You're going to want to do that for both molecular spheres and the molecular connection. Okay. And with that, we are done with these assets, or at least manipulating them. And so you can hide them or just keep them on the table. It's not going to make too much of a difference, whatever you find preferable. Uh, but these are not the assets that the users of our simulation are typically going to be utilizing because they will be utilizing the ones that are being spawned by our little machine or our little dispenser here. 
Next, I will go over VO groups and their proper utilization within the simulation. And we will finish with the global trigger setup within the case. But first, I will show you how the changes that we have done have affected our simulation here. So first, if we are moving about, I can now grab this little sphere and drop it or any of these objects, because previously they were not interactable, but now we can grab them. And we have our little buttons here, which when I press one, will create a copy of that object. Up to 20 of them, but I can also create a red sphere or a white sphere. These are all the interactions that we have currently enabled within our system. We can create up to 20 of these before they will have <laughs> um, anything else going on. But yeah, this is where we are currently at within our simulation. And now if I go back to here, that is all we've done so far. Next, we will begin allowing things to be connected together and grouping them in such a way that you can simplify how your simulation functions. With that, thank you. I will be back shortly.